All right, guys, now I'm outside of Spartan Photo Center, which is a local camera shop here in Spartanburg. A um, couple reasons. Number one, I am gonna talk to a guy in here named James Morton, who is a phenomenal photographer in his own right. But I wanna talk to James because James is kind of the expert when it comes to knowing all the different film simulations that are on the market. Today there is all these different emulsions, you know, purple and turquoise and vintage color. And I, I'm gonna have James explain all that. But the other thing I wanna do here at Spartan Photo is turn in my roll of film because these guys uh, have a full lab, brand new C41 machine. Uh, they do stellar work when it comes to processing, printing, uh, scanning, all of that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna turn in my roll of film because after I photograph James, I will have completed my roll. And uh, so that's why I'm here. So everybody, here is James Morton. James is, in my opinion, the go-to guy when it comes to knowing all the different film simulations and, and not simulations, as uh, emulsions that are out there. Um, it's no longer just black and white or color and pick an ISO. So James, kind of give us a rundown what all is out there these days sure uh really there is more film available now than when film was the only option and it used to mainly be iso uh, color or black and white and now there are just far more varieties in each uh, for instance we have uh your classics we have your kodak we have fuji film which are ubiquitous in the film photography world and kind of were the two big shows for a very long time and we also have uh, brands like Ilford that uh, specialized in black and white for a very very long time and it now has extended into uh, brands like Candido out of the UK they are a color film that is available in ISO 200 400 and 800 adding for a variety of options. We have uh, Harman Phoenix, and Harman is the umbrella company that is over um, Ilford, who for I think 90 plus years only made black and white, and they decided to make their first color film. But calling it a color film and stopping it there is a little bit of a misnomer. It is very much a very warm, a very fiery style of uh, color uh, film negative, and it allows for in this age of adding on filters, adding on edits and changing things for Instagram or other social media sites, this has it all built in as once was the only way you did that. Um, there are companies like Vibe, which are 35 millimeter uh, rolls of film cut from essentially repurposed uh, motion picture film. And then they remove uh, what's referred to as the Remjet layer, which is the big difference chemistry wise for motion picture versus stills. They remove that and you can shoot it. That is a deliciously wonky film where the complexion, the colors, the quality is very good, but you get these surprises almost as if part of the film had been exposed already or used for other things. So it's very cool. I would say it's definitely more on the creative end of things versus kind of a straightforward, here's a picture of something. Um, there are also other brands like Lomography and they are kind of trying to dominate the entire color sector where on one end they have purposely wacky film stocks where they've played around with the uh, color chemistry and they have some films that uh, are referred to as Lomachrome, like they're purple and they're turquoise. So things are going to kind of tint a little bit blue. And even that, they mess with the uh, temperature in such a way that your peaches might be blue, but your blues might turn into a little bit of a pink and it just kind of morphs the way the color looks. And so it allows this uh, little bit of chaos, which is, I think, a very nice aspect of film that digital kind of removes because as much as you can prepare for a shot, you're always still kind of surprised when you get it developed. And that's a very, I would say, welcome aspect of film versus digital, which is very almost surgical and precision, which is necessary for a lot of things. But this adds a little bit of a, a little bit of a fun, a little bit more of a living factor to film. James, where, uh, give us an idea of price. Where, where do all these things land price-wise? Because film can get expensive. Absolutely. Uh, I would say for, so our 
Our cheapest roll of film in the entire store is $5.99. And it is a Kent Mir Pan 100 black and white film. And it is a tremendous film. Like, don't let the price tag uh, fool you. It is great. It has very good contrast, it has very deep blacks. And it is, if someone is getting kind of their feet wet into black and white photography, is a very good place to start. Now, that can also go all the way up to films like um, Ofer Delta 3200, which is a 3200, a very, very fast film, very, very grainy, made for essentially low light situations. Music shows are very popular. Um, back in the day, kind of like sports for the newspaper, this kind of film. And this ranges around like $15. So in the color realm and the black and white realm, you're looking at anywhere between six or seven bucks to um, as much as probably $20 for a roll. Um, and that's between 35 millimeter and um, 120 or medium format films. Okay, and you yourself, working professional photographer, you implement film in your workflow. What is, what's your favorite film stock to shoot? And I know you have a relationship with Candido. Sure, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a Candido ambassador and there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of features of the film that I've grown to become very fond of in, in the way that they react. And then there are just some that are just tried and true, solid films. Um, I would say that my favorite films to use in a professional portrait or commercial setting um, right now. Candido 200 is very good, very fine grain. Portra 160 from Kodak is another one that I uh, like that's very solid. And the uh, Lomography 100, I've been very pleasantly surprised with. Um, Lomography, like I mentioned, they're very well known for their color shifts and a little bit of uh, playing around with the chemistry but their straight 100 speed color film is remarkable. I'm really impressed with it. Awesome. All right, give me a quick little plug on Spartan Photo Center because this, this is the place to not only buy film, but process your film. They got a new machine yeah. and uh, ship stuff from all over the country, send it here to get developed. Give us a little plug on Spartan Photo Center. Sure, so uh, big thing with Spartan Photo Center in general, uh, versus a, not just other camera stores, but other ways of getting your film developed, um, particularly for South Carolina, we're the only show in town. So it's really nice to be able to come to the store, talk to us, ask us questions, figure things out. If you are brand new to it and you think any questions are dumb, trust us, we've heard them all. There are no dumb questions when you're learning and we are glad to help kind of, you know, bridge that gap between a totally just mysterious medium to something that you can master and have a lot of fun with. Um, we did get a new machine um, built this year and delivered just a couple months ago. And it is essentially state of the art. C41 is our uh, process for color film. And it has been tremendous. It's been very nice to not have to uh, Frankenstein and find old parts because a lot of uh, a lot of labs are using equipment that has not really been updated for a couple of decades just due to the demand of film. And so we are proudly one of the few shows in the region that has a machine that is new designed for this and is very reliable, very versatile, and is able to run not just a lot of film, but a lot of varieties of film. And we have a very experienced lab. Um, the store first opened in 1985, 84, 85. And ever since then, there have been photographers who work here. There have been people who are involved with the film um, process in the lab. And so you're not just handing it off to people who can do it. You're handing it off to people with just immeasurable experience and a just myriad of hands-on um, stories with this film that have basically kind of seen everything more than once. And yeah, you're getting a very experienced lab, kind of homegrown and it's a little bit different than dropping it off for someone to send out. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. so. We're going to take your picture here okay. in just a second, but go out here showing a bunch of your work because uh, you're, you're a fabulous photographer, so we're going to show off your stuff, uh, but I'm going to take your picture here. Okay. All right. Thanks, James.
So there you have it guys, three professional photographers who are implementing film into their workflow, which to me just boggles my mind. I came from the days when film was the only option and so now that people are bringing film back into it, it just amazes me. I am, I don't even know what to think to be honest with you. I'm impressed by what people are doing in terms of creativity and, and just the art side of what photography is all about. So leave me a comment. Uh, Give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this. Let me know if you have questions. Uh, I would love to hear people's thoughts about it. Um, it was a lot of fun to get my film camera out and do some portraits with it. That was something I hadn't done for a long time and so I had a lot of fun with that. If you want to contact any of the photographers in this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you sent them some love. I will once again uh, leave their links in the description. Uh, send some shout outs to them, follow them on Instagram and uh, look at their websites, all that kind of stuff. That would be fantastic. And, and like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you for watching. If you got all the way to the end, I know it was a much longer video. And uh, thanks so much for watching as always, guys. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video.